Traditionally, ultrasound has only been used to cannulate the vein. Then you slide in the guide wire, cross your fingers, and hope it ends up at the caveatrial junction, and that the patient doesn't die from an arrhythmia if you've inserted the guide wire too far. But there's a better way, which takes the guesswork out of it. By using the supraclavicular fossa view, you can track the J-tip as it descends the superior vena cava, and where the guide wire goes, the catheter will follow into the desired final location. There are many ways to navigate the guide wire tip towards its desired position at the caveatrial junction, like the ECG method, fluoroscopy, or the subcostal transthoracic echo. We find that none of these is as useful and convenient, though, as the supraclavicular fossa view. Se Chan Kim and his colleagues were the first to describe this technique, where we peer into the mediastinum. Here's the anatomical rationale. By placing the probe just above the clavicle and increasing the depth setting, we can actually get a view straight into the superior vena cava. Here's the ultrasound view. The picture here is aligned with the probe and the anatomy, and you can see the junction of the internal jugular where it merges with the subclavian into the brachiocephalic, and then the superior vena cava. In this picture, we also see a glorious visualization of a guide wire descending towards the right atrium. Here's the footage from the actual cannulation. This view is obtainable for both IJ and subclavian line placement, as long as you use the right side. You can use it for left-sided line, but then you have to sterilize both sides of the neck and place the drapes accordingly. It's a bit cumbersome, but it's perfectly doable. Note that it's not always possible to achieve this perfect view. Anatomy and patient cooperation can sometimes make it downright impossible. And there's a learning curve, but you'll get there with practice. A good way to learn this maneuver is to start out with an IJ cannulation with the guide wire in place. Now it's possible to achieve this with some linear probes, but it's much easier with a microconvex. Grab the probe with the hand along the top side, find the short axis view of the IJ, and locate the hyperechoic dot, which is the guide wire. Tilt the probe caudally in order to follow the guide wire as it descends. When you've tilted the probe almost 90 degrees, you should see the junction of the subclav and the IJ. The trick is to keep the vein dead center of the screen throughout the motion. Now increase the gain and increase the depth to approximately 12 centimeters. You have now hopefully achieved the supraclavicular fossa view. You can find the same view when placing a subclav line. Use the short axis view of the IJ, but now you first need to confirm that you don't see a hyperechoic dot, as that would indicate a cranially deviating guide wire. Tilt caudally until you see the guide wire entering the brachio brachiocephalic vein from the left, then proceed by looking towards the right atrium and increasing the depth. In this video, you can even see the J-tip clearly and trace it as we feed the guide wire. The J-tip should ideally be placed at the level where the right pulmonary artery crosses the superior vena cava. Don't go any further, as arrhythmias can be provoked if the wire enters the heart. We can illustrate this point with a CT scan. The right pulmonary artery can be seen in the left image. And in the image on the right, the catheter tip is seen just at the caveatrial junction, corresponding to the lower border of the RPA. So, the J tip is in position. At this point, take a look at the guide wire depth markings in order to gauge the distance from the skin puncture to the RPA. You can clearly see the 20 cm mark against the gauze. It's approximately 5 cm from the skin, so it follows that the distance from the skin to the RPA is 15 cm. Therefore, if you insert the catheter 15 cm, its tip will end up in the perfect location. 
Many commercial CVC kits come with two short guide wires. Too short means that when the J-tip reaches the RPA, the amount of guide wire left outside the patient is shorter than the central line, in effect forcing you to retract the wire when you thread the catheter. In these cases, use the SuperClav Fossa view to make sure that the guide wire and the threaded catheter head in the right direction towards the superior vena cava during the insertion. So, what do you do if your subclav guide wire has deviated upwards into the IJ or across to the left brachiocephalic veins? Well, you adjust it in real time, and this is where the SuperClav Fossa view is unbeatable. This is a cross-section of the IJ, and the hyperechoic duct is not supposed to be there. The guide wire deviates cranially from the subclav into the IJ. The guide wire can be repositioned to the superior vena cava by retracting it into the loop, locking it with the thumb, and rotating it 180 degrees and reinserting it. Like so. There you have it. Master the supraclavicular fossa view, and your central line life will be changed forever.